algebra, let's say in this question, you would agree in saying that the variable in this expression, 4x plus 20, is x. But in statistics, a variable is something else. It is just a number. And depending on the type of number, you can choose which kind of variable it is. Hey guys, I'm Mahira. Welcome to Mini Mini Mastermind. And today we're going to discuss chapter 2 of class 11 statistics called collection of data. Now you must be thinking why I am telling you about variables instead of data. Now, now, don't get too upset. So ready? Let's do this. Let's do this. Oh, anyways, the answer to the first question of the last video is that scarcity causes economic problem as scarce resources are unable to fulfill our unlimited wants and the problem of choice occurs where we need to leave some of our wants and hence the economic problem is formed. And the answer to the second question is that as everybody experiences economic problem, meaning their unlimited wants are quite a lot in comparison to the less resources, the problem of choice is unavoidable in real life. So there are two types of data, primary data and secondary data. data is the data collected from its origin. For example, I want to know the favorite milkshakes of everybody in my neighborhood. So, I directly conduct a survey and find out that 85% of people in my neighborhood love mango milkshake and the other, well, banana. So, this data for me is very original or primary data. But then my cousin comes home and tearfully says, my juice startup has failed. Whatever shall I do? So I gave him my data and he opened a milkshake startup in my neighborhood and gave me 50% of his first month's income. This data for him is not original and is secondary data. Now let's understand the differences between primary data and secondary data. Primary data is original. Secondary data is not original. Primary data collection has a very high cost, but secondary data is cheaper. Primary data is trustworthy, but secondary data, not so much. Primary data is time consuming, but secondary data saves time and effort. Surveys are the way forward for collecting data, but it depends on you, the investigator, to choose which method of collecting data you should do. So for collecting primary data, a. Personal interviews. This is when you interview the respondent or the people who will be responding your questions one by one and ask him or her the questions. This is typically divided into three categories. 1. Direct personal investigation. This is when you directly establish a connection with the respondents and then ask him or her the questions. Two, indirect oral investigation is when you ask somebody who knows the information you're looking for about the respondents instead of directly asking the respondents themselves. No, no, this is not a form of secondary data as person you're asking the data from is actually not collecting it intentionally but already knows it as he or she is seeing it in their 
everyday life. For example, we can ask an employer about the division of labor among the employees instead of um, bothering our dear employees. Three, information through local correspondence is when we hire some people from the locality to ask the questions from the respondents. And this helps in cases of stuff like you don't know the language the respondents speak. Information through questionnaires or schedules is when the investigator, meaning you over here, hands out different sets of questions to the respondents or emails them actually and the respondents have to answer those set of questions but that is not always the case and not always do the respondents answer the questions well the difference between questionnaires and schedules explains it all questionnaires are pieces of paper which the investigator hands over to the respondents or the sets of questions that the investigator emails to the respondents and the respondents have to answer it. But in schedules, the investigator gives that piece of paper to the enumerator, a person who is assigned the task of asking the respondents the questions which are written and writing them down himself or herself. Now, schedules are often used if the people who, or the respondents are illiterate or have a different language of communication. Questionnaires can also be emailed, but schedules are better because some questions might become left over as the respondents get tired of hunching their back and staring at a screen. Next is telephonic interview, which is an interview done over a telephone, obviously. Now, there are two types of sources of secondary data. First is published sources, which are the documents or files that are collected by private or government entities and are also published. But unpublished sources or the documents and files that are collected, but they are not published by, by the entities. Phew, that just ate my brain. Some water, some water. Ah, nice water. Take a refreshing break. Have some water for yourself. Now, I know your head must be spinning, but don't worry as I'll upload a PDF about this complicated stuff. So, making a questionnaire has some requirements. Don't make too complicated or personal questions. Now, also put the questions in proper order and don't include too many questions. Do not include long math. And also, ask the same question twice, but in different manners. Now you'll say, what is the meaning of different manners? Well, for example, I want to know the age of a respondent. So first, I'll ask them that choose your age from the options below. So I'll give them options like 1 to 13, 13 to 18, or 18 plus. Then, after at least five more questions, we can write another question, but the same. Meaning, like I'll write, choose your age group from below, and I will write child, teenager, and adult. Okay. Now, census and sample methods of collecting data are quite common. Census is when I ask each and every person from the whole population their favorite milkshake. But in sample, what we do is that we ask one house out of every 10 houses, okay? And then we kind of multiply it to end up with the population. So now there are different 
types of sampling too, random and non-random. Random has the cheat system or lottery method, where you take different pieces of paper, write, uh, write the names down, throw them in a box and pick out a few. Okay, got it. Next is non-random method. Now, non-random method has five different types. First is purposive. Now, in purposive, the investigator themselves chooses which houses will he ask about the milkshakes. Second is stratified. Well, in stratified, the investigator will classify only houses according to some resemblance. And then from each category, he will pick a random amount of houses. Okay. Then third one is um this one I forgot. No, it's systematic sampling. For now, this systematic sampling is for example, we'll take an example of 10 or 100. Let's say there are 100 houses. Okay? So then I divide these 100 houses into groups of 10. Then what I do is I call out a number. I mean, sorry. First, I arrange a number. And accordingly, I give each house one number from 1 to 100. Okay? Then I call out a number. For example, 7. So the 7th one from the first group will be taken. And so will the seventh one from the other groups. I can explain it to another example. For example, the seating arrangement of a hall. Let's say there are 100 seats. Well, I say 7. So the 7th, 17th, 27th, 37th, 47th, 57th, 67th, 77th, 87th, 97th. These seats will all be taken into my sample. Get it? I hope you get it now. It's made quite simple. Then there's total sampling, where we again categorize each and every house into the categories according to their resemblances. But there we take an equal am amount of houses from each of the categories. And last is the convened sampling. And there the investigator as the population their choice of houses and then select certain houses according to their choices so god that was quite difficult but i explained it in an easy way so that you can understand it in the best way possible still there is room for error sampling errors and non-sampling errors are quite common now sampling errors is no such error. Sampling error is actually the difference between the true amount and the estimate, meaning the result of the sample. So now sampling errors can be avoided by increasing the sample size. Then there are non-sampling errors. Now non-sampling errors are errors that cause differences from the real value and the result of the survey. For example, sampling bias. Now you'll say, what is sampling bias? Well, it is when some of the respondents cannot be included. For example, slum dwellers cannot most of the times contribute to the census of, of India's population. And also another non-sampling error is mainly that the respondents don't want to give the information because everyone cares about privacy. Even I do care about mine. And the other mistakes are maybe forgetfulness or carelessness or maybe a variation in the numbers. For example, in prices. Prices vary according to quality and quantity, which changes from time to time. Census of India and NSSO also collect data to publish it and help us out. The Census of India collects information about the amount of population and classifies it according to area, gender, literacy, and 
lot more. And the NSSO, or the National Sample Survey Office, collects samples for different areas, like distribution of land and livestock, unemployment rate, and lot more. So that's it for today. The least you can do after all I'm giving you, my videos, info, and the PDF that I'm gonna upload is liking this video, subscribing my channel, and sharing this video and this channel to your friends and family so that they also can benefit from this content. The question for today is that how can sampling and non-sampling errors affect the results of the survey? Now, you just note your answer down and turn on the notification bell as I'll tell the answer to this question so that you can match your answer with this and with my answer and the correct answer in the next video. Thanks and goodbye.